Earthquakes wreak havoc wherever they strike. Few know that as well as the people of Southern California. This is where earthquake science thrives, fed by data from thousands of sensors spread throughout the region. Now researchers at Caltech are expanding that network with a program that could turn every cell phone into an earthquake sensor, potentially helping emergency responders when disaster strikes. Join me as I talk with them about the Community Seismic Network and about the amazing work they're doing to make sense of its data in your phone as quake detector. Earthquake effects can vary dramatically, even from block to block. So you need a high density of sensors throughout the target area, which has historically been an expensive proposition. And so a traditional accelerometer is about three to four thousand dollars for the sensor, and then you have to pay additional for the digitizer, the data logger. To date, many of the models that have been used, that have been produced, uh, use small numbers of sensors, and so you can kind of think of them as geographically coarse. To get more sensors in the field, the Community Seismic Network began in 2010 as a collaboration between Caltech and the U.S. National Science Foundation, with primary funding from the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. The seismic part is uh, staffed by geophysics people, seismologists. Another third of the team is the computer science community. And the third piece of our group is structural and civil engineers. The project places inexpensive accelerometers with community volunteers throughout the target area. We take a small plug computer, price point $100, put that together with a sensor that is perhaps $100 or less. And so for about $200, we can put these together, put them in a package, hide it in a closet on every floor of a skyscraper. That's been especially useful for experiments where researchers literally shake the campus's Millikan Library to study the effects throughout the building. This is an eccentric mass shaker. You can see how it's bolted down to the, the roof. And the way it works is it, it consists of these two buckets, and the buckets are loaded up with mass. And the way it, it imparts force on the building is that every time the buckets are lined up, and we can change the orientation of this, but whenever the buckets are lined up, it's imposing force in that direction. The project's inexpensive accelerometers are perfect for measuring force in one building. But what about an area as large as Southern California? That's where cell phones come in. The city, if you okay. think about it, you might want to have 10 sensors per square mile. Across a large area like Los Angeles, you might be talking about, well, you may need tens or hundreds of thousands of sensors to blanket that area. And fortunately, if you think about how many you know, smartphones there are, for example, uh, we already have that density. The project leverages those smartphones through an app called CrowdShake, available for Android devices. But smartphones are very different from dedicated earthquake equipment. First, they're not as sensitive. This device will measure about one ten thousandth the force of gravity. The one in your phone is a couple of hundred times less sensitive than that. But you already own it. This hundred dollars in principle can be zero dollars because you already bought one. Depending on what we're trying to do, it can be good enough. The second problem with phones is that they get jangled in pockets, jostled in bags and backpacks, and subjected to all kinds of unpredictable shocks. The first sort of thing about that is that type of thing we would hope would look different from large-scale earthquakes. Uh, the second thing about it is that you and I might be walking around at different points in the day and um, there's sort of no rhyme or reason to when our phones get jostled around. And so if you look at this sort of spatially on a map, you don't see any coherent pattern. You just see noise flickering like static. Finally, managing accelerometer data from thousands of phones poses a huge burden. Thinking about sending this from your phone, you're talking about using someone's data plan, you're using someone's battery and bandwidth to, to transmit that. The solution to that problem is described in detail in this month's Communications of the ACM in the article, Community Sense and Response Systems, Your Phone as Quake Detector. The research may have repercussions far beyond earthquake sensing. So 
but we tried to avoid incorporating very domain-specific knowledge into the algorithms. These are things which we would hope would be useful for everything from earthquakes to studying the outbreak of epidemics to studying traffic in wireless networks. Like, we would like to be able to have things that are general for extracting event data from sensors. For more details, see this month's issue of Communications of the ACM. In Southern California, I'm Tom Geller for the Association for Computing Machinery, advancing computing as a science and profession.